Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. My name is Dr. Tom LeHue. This is my daughter Kaylee, and she's going to be joining me for this video today. We're going to be talking about type nines. We're going to be talking about the levels of health of type nines, and she is a nine wing one. And uh, so we're going to get her input on this video. Um, thank you, Kaylee, for joining me for this video. Thanks I'm glad that you're able to. <laughs> To, uh, to participate with us. All right, so before we get started, just wanna call your attention to the description below to a link to my website if you wanna uh, look at coaching appointments with myself. And Kaylee also offers coaching appointments. Uh, her information, her YouTube channel, and her website is all in the description below where you can check those out. Also, for you guys that uh, may not know yet, um, we are starting a certificate program and so information about that certificate if you want to become certified as an Enneagram coach and help others uh, that, that to, to help them in their um, relationships or help them understand more about themselves and you love people and you want to know more about people uh, information is on my website so check that out and thank you again to my patrons I really appreciate your support for the channel so let's get started uh, Kaylee anything you want to say before we look at the information on levels of health of type 9 um, I will say that I'm an Enneagram nine wing one. I'm an INFJ. Um, I've been in the really unhealthy places. And right now I would say I'm right between that healthy and average, like right between there, um, on, on my way to being healthier. So that's at least where I am now. So whenever I'm talking about the Enneagram, I might, or the levels of health, I might be going and saying like, oh yeah, I totally had a problem with this but maybe I've worked through it a little bit but yes anyways yeah so. I think we're always moving to trying to move to better places of health and yeah and this is a really great tool to do that mm. yeah we're gonna be looking at uh, Bogda's book on uh, bringing out the best in everyone you coach and uh, just got some great information about levels of health among other things so uh, let's get started and how's your coaching appointments going you, they, do, you do coaching appointments with people yeah I meet with a ton of nines I think I meet with a lot of nines because they're like do you understand um, or they're like I'm married to a nine and they're so bad tell me why and that's, <laughs> I do a lot of that I love meeting with anyone um, I, I think it's really enjoyable and you know I love learning more about people as I work with them yeah yep <laughs> all right well let's look at uh let's look at the lowest level of health first um that's where i like to begin spend <laughs> my time there the lowest level of health according to uh bogda's book on for a nine is called the sleeper now why do you think that we call it the sleeper Haley? well because you know as a nine they are this physical body type but they have the separation of doing from thinking and feeling and when you are uncomfortable in your physical life or your emotional and thinking life you can easily just kind of die to it like no it doesn't exist like these emotions are overwhelming so i'll just pretend they don't exist and now you have you know, your passions are gone, your interests are gone, your hobbies, you, literally your your opinions and your thoughts are kind of dissipating. So what else is there for you to do other than to just be left alone, you know, at peace, this fake peace of, well, when I'm sleeping, unconsciousness, you know, it's, I don't have to worry about it because I'm asleep to it. <laughs> yeah. I always think of kind of like head in the sand, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's one thing when you've taken care of all of your problems and you've taken care of all of your planning that needs to be in life and you are at peace because mm -hmm. everything around you is taken care of. It's peaceful. It's peaceful. Mm -hmm. But sometimes nines kind of want to rush that and get to the peaceful without necessarily taking care of all the things in life that need to be taken care of. So sometimes a nine might need to wake up and, hey, are you really tuned into life and addressing the things in life that need to be addressed and fighting all the battles that life you need to fight and engage in all those things. So a good word for nines is engage. And initiation. Yeah. If you can initiate something, you're probably heading in the right direction. And I often say to nines when I'm coaching nines is ask yourself the, is it okay for a normal person to expect such and such or do such and such, then if your answer is, well, sure, it's okay for a normal person to, to have uh, you know, dreams and goals and <laughs> wishes and hopes and thoughts and opinions, then it's probably okay for me to have those dreams and goals and opinions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because nines often take themselves out of scenarios and we want to get them yeah. back into those scenarios. Okay, so the sleeper. So what she says is the core fear at this lowest level of the nine is a separation from others 
or being controlled or of discord. Mm -hmm. So the core fear of that lowest level of a nine would be other people might abandon. So if I were to speak up, if I were to initiate, if I were to show up fully, then of course people would, would probably be done with me and they, they wouldn't want. Yeah. And that's something where, you know, as a nine, you have to look at you, then you're not trusting the people in your life that you love. If you don't feel like you can tell your significant other, you know, I really don't like this, that, and the other, and you feel like they're going to abandon you because of that, then they don't love you because a person that loves you will not just abandon you when you tell them, I really don't like, you know, Alfredo. Maybe we shouldn't eat it every week. It's like something as dumb and as simple as that, that could be, you know, make a nine's heart start racing of like, I'm going to tell them I don't like when they do this thing, or I don't like this certain thing, then they're going to leave me. Or I don't want to listen to this music. Yeah. Right. Then like, if you think somebody's going to abandon you over something that small, do you really even want it? And then you have to think past that of like, okay, would the, is that realistic? Are they actually going to abandon me over that? And if they did abandon me over this issue, then obviously our relationship wasn't as close as... Yeah. 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 They probably have given other people, if you're looking at those small of things, then they have probably, probably given you tons of times where you could abandon them, where they yell at you and where they say they don't like this thing. And you never, probably never take it super personally and that it's like oh, well, I should just get out of here and leave because, you know, maybe in that unhealthy place of I'll stop causing you problems if I withdraw, but not, you know what, I give up. I'm done. You're you're a hopeless case. I'm not able to fix your problems. And so you can see that's not how relationships work. That's not how your relationship works. You probably need to look at, you know, the facts. Sometimes nines things. have to get a break away, sort of go out into the 100-acre wood and and then get some distance between themselves and others to realize this relationship yeah. isn't as good as I thought it was, or this relationship is more secure than I fear mm -hmm. it is. The and process. Sometimes mm -hmm. in the moment, I think nines can, can miss the forest for the trees. All right, mm -hmm. so being controlled, nines don't wanna be controlled. That's interesting because it does kind of seem like they willingly allow people to control them sometimes, but maybe it's in a detached sort of way. Like, like I'll go along with people. I'm um, choosing to, yeah, I'm choosing to not listen to you argue anymore, so I'll just do it. Um, or the, yeah, sure, uh, Harry, you want me to come to your birthday party even though I hate you? Sure. And then you go to <laughs> Harry's birth, and then, you know, you don't go. And so you're not being controlled, but you're being sneaky. That's, no one wants a sneaky person. <laughs> yeah, you may be, like, assenting, like, agreement, implying agreement to things you don't really intend on. Mm hmm actually following through with and of course discord i think nines don't like discord generally that conflict that mm -hmm. you know so nines with a low degree of self-mastery do not pay attention to themselves mm -hmm. you are a person too you were born <laughs> from somebody just like everybody else was right yeah other people see you walking around the sidewalk just like you see them yeah sometimes people you know will be pretty outlandish in their dress like some people, sevens could be like that just for Four fun. Sevens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could could be like that for fun. Hey, Excellent. wait till people get a load of this crate. Yeah, I think nines could like maybe just go for what's comfortable and look some at cartoon characters. I wear the same outfit every day. Somebody might point out that your clothes don't match, and a nine, oh, I guess I didn't <laughs> care or think about that. Mm -hmm. um, so not pay attention to themselves. Um, may have no energy to pay attention to anyone else. That's interesting. But I feel like a lot of times with that, you get to kind of, with the 9-8, it's very obvious. If you bring your problem to a 9-8 and they don't have the emotional energy to listen to it, they'll just be like, mm, okay, that's great. And kind of evade from that a little bit. You'll physically see them leave. Whereas a 9-1 might be like, oh, your problem's okay. Yeah, I'm and just, listening. I'm listening. I'm in the box in my head. Yeah, zoned out. <laughs> yeah. The nine eight's a little more easy to push back against people. Yeah, that's not my problem. I'm not really gonna. Yeah, yeah. you might see that they're not listening, whereas the nine one, you might not 
be able to tell they really aren't listening. Yeah. I remember this is the lowest level. Yeah. So if you're hearing this and you're like, well, I'm not like that. Well, good, 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 good. That's good. This is the lowest level of health. Mm -hmm. They ignore even the most life threatening problems. What? And so there's, yeah, there's things around you that may need your attention, but the nine, for whatever reason, eh, it's probably, it's kind of like the universe will work it out. Mm -hmm. I think nines, they love like those slogans that get you off the hook, like, well, all we can do now is pray, or hundred years from now, it's not going to matter, or let go and let God, or there's, you know, a lot of these kinds of phrases. All the like, the life is good t-shirts with like yeah. the little guys camping, just life is good. And that's, I think, something we could share. Yeah. Nines and sevens could share that positive general. Yeah. They're both optimists. Yeah. Optimistic. But, yeah. But sevens are going to engage. Yeah. In maybe things that are a waste of time. The nine might just be look disengaged. Yeah, I, I think I've, I'm not sure if I've said it in a lot of my videos or not, but a lot of times when I think about optimism with the different types, the two, the seven, and the nine are the optimists. And the twos are kind of like, I can swoop in and save this situation. I'll be able to help you through this. So it's really good because see how you're okay now because I helped you with it. Um, the sevens are kind of like, it wasn't really like that. Like, that's not what really happened, right? They kind of reframe. And nines are kind of like, well, I mean, yes, this and this and this did happen, but it's all kind of relative. To me, it was bad, but to you, it was good, maybe. So it's fine. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, it's your life and you have to say, but to me, it was bad and I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. And are you, do you permit yourself to register that? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't prefer. That was a key word for you when you yeah. were learning about the Enneagram, wasn't it? Like, or yeah. before that even. Yeah, before. Because I was like, I can't say I want something that's so selfish and big. I'm taking up too much space by wanting something. But I can say, well, I would prefer to go here <laughs> over there, but it doesn't matter, you know? Right. To yeah. just to get in touch with your own voice enough to hear what you prefer. Yeah. What is a preference? That's a big aren't bad. People that's something that I think like as a seven, I just take for granted that of course I know what I prefer. Or I want to try them all as a seven. I really want to try them all so that I could know what I prefer. Mm -hmm. Like that that is something that I'm interested in finding what I prefer. So I want to try every item on the menu until I want to try every chocolate in the box until I know which one I prefer. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm interested in figuring out. Now, that can be exhausting, of course. And as a seven, I have told myself many times, you can't do that. You Especially have to just, the counter seven. Yeah, you have to just yeah. go with what you know because mm -hmm. it gets exhausting, that pursuit of trying everything. Right. And I think as a nine, you can easily just kind of not think about what you prefer and yeah. just whatever is in front of me is fine. Yeah. Which is makes you guys agreeable to live with. Yeah, and if you're actually content with that, um, you know, it's okay to be content and it's good to be content, but, um, don't let that be your fault of contentness, content, contentedness. Yes. Yes. So, <laughs> you know, being okay with anything you might, you know, if you start waking up and paying attention to your actual emotions and thoughts about things, you might notice I'm not really content. I'm forcing myself to be content. Um, or I'm content, but I'm not happy. Um, I, I've started doing a thing where every time I go to a restaurant, I try to get something I've never had before. And every time I'm like, I, I know I like this, but I'm like, just do it. Just do the thing. <laughs> and I do it and I'm like, oh, this is nice. Okay. And it's just like this weird thing of like, I know I can be content with anything. So at least maybe try for something better. <laughs> so you're, you're in a sense, you're forcing yourself to engage in a way that you're impulse would not yes want allow. to engage. <laughs> yes. Like I'm going to make myself grow and have new experiences. Yeah, whether I want to or not, I'm gonna do it. And right. I'm like this And is I do the good. opposite. I yes. do the opposite. <laughs> I tell myself, you can't try everything. You have to just, you know, limit mm -hmm. yourself. And and seven goes to five. Less is more. And mm -hmm. oftentimes less is more. But for you, I think that does that is a good move for a nine. Okay, so they may ignore problems. I think that's very true of nines. They can ignore problems and sort of just, again, feel like you're burying your head in the sand. Other people around you would feel like you're burying your head in the sand and you're because not dealing kind of with what enablers. needs. Yeah, you're not dealing with threats in your eight wing and you're not dealing with goals that need to be accomplished in your one wing. You're just kind of stuck and maybe protecting your comfort. And compliant. Yeah, which one of the reasons I think that 
I, I, I've kind of sorted out, and correct me if I'm wrong, I've kind of sorted out that nines, you know, they have that unique ability to see other people's perspectives. And I realized, you know, part of the reason behind why nines can see other people's point of view or the other side of an argument is it insulates you from having to take action because you can say, well, as strongly as this case over here makes sense, I'm sure there's another side to this. So therefore, I don't need to make a decision. I don't need to pick a side. I don't need to act because there's more than one side to this. So I don't really need to move or take action. Yeah, I think that's that's one one benefit of that your sin will experience in um, you know seeing everyone's perspective. Another is then you don't have to have your own thoughts and opinions. You don't have to contribute. Um, you don't have to engage your own voice. Yeah, when you don't know what your voice is, it's like, okay, so I have to climb Mount Everest to find what I think. Like, I have to figure all this out, and then I have to voice it, like, actually say it, because now I have a conviction, and I have to put it out there. But, um, you know, kind of with that one wing or going to six, I think a little bit more of that, like, feeling that anxiety and stress. People are going to be turning it against me. They're, if I say something they don't like, if I have an opinion that's wrong, um, you know, I they... I meet new people and they all say they like this sports team, but I know I like this one. I might downplay how much I like the one I actually like and build up the one that they like. Why? Why would you do that? What's the point? Will an eight do that? No. Will a five do that? No. And they're perfectly happy with themselves, okay? And, you know, you have something unique to bring, but it can be hard if people are going to criticize it because then it's like, okay, I'm bad. I'm bad for... Or I'm being a problem. Yeah, I'm being a burden. I'm... I was wrong. I shouldn't have said that. It's an opinion. It's not that big a deal. Right. And it certainly wouldn't bother you. Yeah, if somebody else disagreed. If somebody else did that, but then you can't see yourself doing it. Mm -hmm. It's interesting in that how that works. Yeah. So sneaky. All right. So they may refuse to face the most obvious consequences of their desire to pretend that everything is okay. Everything's okay. I don't have anything to worry about. I'm okay. And And a lot of times I think, you know, a six really deserves to be at nine mm-hmm. because they have taken all of the precautions and plans and strategize. And so they, they kind of deserve to be at rest at because peace, yeah. at peace. Nines kind of are there and really, you know. Mooching off of it. <laughs> <laughs> mooching off of the. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like because I refuse to be stressed. But mm-hmm. of course, nine goes to six or nine looks like a six under stress when you realize yeah. I can't ignore this problem any longer yeah and a lot of times it seems like nines will use the fear of waiting to the last minute or the fear of people are upset with me because i've delayed 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 or haven't shown up and now that fear can be useful that six fear can be useful (laughs) as energy to Mm -hmm. help you get stuff done that you put off in your nine way of yeah and and it's like nines i think can do that where they can just kind of ignore the deadline especially nine eights they can like ignore the deadline and then oh crap that's due tomorrow fear of the six give me some push to get it across the finish line and it's done and now i can go back to sleep again and i think a big like there's a similarity between what the nine does and what the four does of I'm scared it's not going to be the way I envision it. A little bit of this optimist. I'm, uh, you know, I'm scared it's not going to be good enough or that people might insult it. But if I know that I didn't give it all my effort, then when they insult it, oh. okay, it's, you know, I didn't, you've I didn't insulated even try that yourself. Hard. Like you've insulated yourself, mm-hmm. protected yourself. So if somebody doesn't like it or complains about it, well... I didn't really put all that much effort yeah. into it. So if I would have tried harder, then mm-hmm. it would have been great. But Yeah. I didn't have enough time to, you know, do it as good as I could have. Or I was trying to do it in such a way that Charlie would be happy with it. Yeah. And you're like, that's, you had months. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you literally, I literally had months to do this. And what did I do? Oh, okay. That's a lie. It's a sham. Low level nines can be chronically sluggish and immovable. Remember, I always say nines are not a problem in the way that anvils aren't problems, right? <laughs> An anvil never causes a problem until you try to move it, right? And then you'll see yeah. sometimes, you'll sometimes see a nine 
You'll see that volcano of the night when you start pushing on them, moving them. You know, you need to get those papers in, Kaylee. If you got those papers in, you need to call the insurance office. You need to call the tax collector's office and get those paperwork in. Paper, paper, paper. <laughs> and then finally they're like, Gah! Mm-hmm. Stop. You know, it's this internal demolition of I'm not safe to be around you anymore because you make me uncomfortable. I guess I'll disconnect from you. Yeah. And then yeah. the nine puts up a wall when really just a fence with a gate, you know, some boundaries. But if you don't like that process of putting up boundaries with people, then you might just avoid them altogether. Yeah. And sometimes nines can blacklist people that maybe just needed to be confronted. You know, you could just yeah. confront somebody, but there's that discord, that fear of discord or that fear that person is going to be upset with me where you could just go to them and say, hey, dad, you need to lay off or hey, Bob, you need to back up and I'll take care of it when I'm ready. So thank you. I'm done with this conversation. And the person will go, oh, there's a boundary there. There's a wall there. Mm -hmm. But what's more likely is that the nine will just never talk to them again, avoid them and and just cut them out of their life. Yeah. Don't cut me out of your life, Kaylee. Yeah. No, you have to ask, do I love this person enough to make myself uncomfortable enough to continue on in the future instead of, you know, I'm going to show you love and love until I just can't do it anymore. Well, you know, I feel like nines... So like the ones that I talk to and myself even, there's this huge pressure that just builds up. And you're like, if I start saying that I'm mad about something, it's just going to be this huge eruption. It's going to go on and on. But usually, like, as soon as you say one thing, like, I really don't like it when this, that, and the other, the pressure is just like you let all the air out of the balloon and then you can just talk. Um, it's usually not this big explosion that you're worried you're going to have because as soon as you start letting a little bit of the pressure out, it all starts coming out. Do you but, fear you're going to get stuck in that anger or stuck in that? Because like as a seven, I sometimes am afraid like I'm going to get stuck in sad feelings. Like if I let myself feel sad stuff, well, then it's never going to end. I'll just be no, stuck in that. I, um, I've developed a very good relationship with anger recently. Good. And, yeah, I've been doing a lot better with like actually, you know, okay, I'm not sad about this. I'm mad about this. I'm angry and I want someone to blame. I'm like, okay, don't do that. But I'm like, you know, I anger, I don't feel like I'm going to get stuck in it. I, it's the fear of, I'm going to push you away with it. I'm going to be the reason you abandon me. You leave me because I infringed on your boundaries and I hurt you. You were soft and I hurt you. And you know, I made you uncomfortable. I would never want you to do that to me. And I did the worst thing I could do. And I did it to you. And I'm so sorry. I don't want to do that. So I try to not say anything when I'm actually angry. Like in the moment when I'm angry, I'm like, just think about it. Just think, just think. And then I'm like, okay, now that it's been 20 minutes (laughs) or now that it's been a little while, here's what I was thinking. Now that I'm not going to just like, you know, say it really in a nasty tone. How can I say this? But it's not the fear of being stuck in anger, maybe stuck in conflict. We're gonna, you're gonna be mad at me and I'm gonna be mad at you, but I'm not scared that I'm gonna keep being angry. It's more like I'm scared you're just gonna say, you know what, I've had enough, done. Like, okay, <laughs> this is it, that's done. So in that interesting, like the nine might be afraid the other person will be upset and cut them off, so the nine cuts them off. Yeah, yeah. That's a key. <laughs> <laughs> That's a key. Yeah. All right. Okay. So um, anything else about the low level of the night? Okay. Uh, they may become passive aggressive, saying yes, but really, if they really thought about it, they might mean no. Uh, I think that nines can do that. Like if I were to ask a nine, hey, could you help me, um, you know, move boxes all weekend on Saturday, my your day off, it's going to be a terrible job. The nine's going to feel this pressure to like, they already know what my want is more than their own. And they're going to feel inclined to say yes. I think yes. I might be able to do that. Um, maybe. Yeah. But then kind of kick themselves all yeah. the way home. Like, why did I agree to this? Or yeah. or tell themselves, oh, it's fine. I don't really mind. And yeah. they needed help. And I didn't have anything planned anyway. But obviously, if you could just listen to your own voice for a second you would hear yourself say, I don't want to do that. Yeah, not wanting to do it is a valid excuse. Yeah, I don't want to do that. You don't have to do it. But there's that, an eight would have no problem, right? Right, one next to you. And even sometimes a one might have no problem saying, yeah, sorry, Tom, I can't help you with that. I got mm-hmm. other things I got to do. Yeah, and a lot of times a nine, well, the, how the passive aggressive stuff plays in is like, 
sure, I'll do this thing that I hate that I don't want to do. And then they'll get right up to, you know, I'm supposed to be there in 30 minutes and I'm laying in bed. I feel sick because I've made myself feel sick in order to not have to do this thing. Be like, hey, I'm really sick. I'm not going to be able to make yeah, it. Sorry. And then they'll spend the whole rest of their day. You know, they spent the whole half of their day feeling sick because they didn't want to do this. And then, oh, I'm so relieved because now I don't have to do this thing that you never had to do in the first place. And then maybe if you just didn't show up, then you end up blacklisting that person again. Yeah. That back to that. Cause like I didn't show up and I know they're going to be upset with me. And so I probably just will never talk to them again in my whole life. I'll just go in the back door of the office and never see them because yeah. I, didn't, I didn't show up for them. Yeah. And I know I didn't. Yeah. It's so much easier to take easy. Nines love easy. This is actually easier. Listen, if you don't listen to anything else, <laughs> this is what's easy. Um, not hating people, not letting yourself get to the point where you resent them and, um, you know, telling the truth what, about what's going on and saying like, you know, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do it that day. I can let you know later if you still want to soften it. I can text you no later when I'm not looking at you, but I'll, I can tell you I probably can't, but I'll let you know. And then if you don't do that, you know, you and you do just not see them. You don't go. You told them you wouldn't, you didn't, and you see them later. Just go up and say, hey, I'm sorry I didn't make it. I hope you had a great day anyways. And then that should be the end of it. Because now you don't have to, oh yeah, this person, every time they see me, they think about how I was a bad friend to them. You just, you get it off your chest. Now you're Again, actually at peace. It takes initiating yeah. and engaging and trusting that this relationship is going to be strong enough for that. And if it's, <coughs> not, if it's not strong enough for you to say, I'm sorry, but I can't come to your stupid dog's birthday party. Yeah. Then, then really, is that that good of a relationship? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. That's the lowest level, the sleeper. The mid-level of the nine is called the harmonizer. Harmonizer. And I think, you know, when nines are really healthy, they do create harmony. They they bring people down, they talk people down, and they harmonize their environments. I think when a nine is just like low level or mid-level, is they just want to have harmony themselves. It's like, oh, there's Discord over here. Not I gotta for me. I gotta get away from that. <laughs> mm -hmm. A healthy nine will move toward the Discord and say, Hey Bob, Jack, I don't think we're on the same page. Let's talk this out and mm -hmm. let's let's hear each other. A mm -hmm. value of a nine to be heard, right? Yeah. So let's listen to each other and let's hear each other out. And but it's gonna take some courage for a nine to be a a harmonizer. Mm -hmm. But I think at that mid-level or that low level, the nine is really just concerned about their own sense of harmony, their own sense of peace and comfort. Yeah, because with the healthier nine, you can evaluate, okay, I really do kind of, I don't see myself at the center of my universe as much as maybe some other people would. I kind of do see myself as like, you know, the supporting character and I, you know... I, of your own story. Yes, of your own story. You know, Winnie the Pooh walking through the woods, you know. Anyways, so you don't you don't see yourself as the reason why everybody showed up. The reason we all came here is to celebrate you. You're even at your own birthday party, you might not feel like that's really the case. Well, if you really don't feel like it's about you, then you should be able to enter into conflict and it not be a big deal because it's really it isn't about you. You are a outside entity coming to diffuse a problematic situation. If it's not about you, then you shouldn't be feeling this uncomfortable feeling. Why are you feeling this uncomfortable feeling? Okay, let's, you know, let's figure that out. Yeah. So you're kind of like have figured out how to talk yourself into engaging in difficult circumstances. Uh, yeah, just because I'm participating in the conversation doesn't mean that you're mad at me. Just because you want to fight about your opinion on behalf of your opinion doesn't mean you don't like me doesn't right. mean you have anything against me right so Cause some types just like the exchange the arguing <laughs> the banter yeah the yeah. challenge they you know they they want you to stand up for what you believe in and mm -hmm. you know and have your own ideas when you recognize yeah. that this may not really even be about me that's a comforting thought to a nine yeah. Yeah. All right. So nines uh, will have a core concern at this mid level with stability, harmony, and on being heard and making sure I think other people are heard. If you were working at a company, 
as a nine, it seems like that would be a huge value for you is that this is a place where everybody feels like they're heard, that all of our employees are happy, our customers uh, feel like they're cared for, and you're not a two, so you're not like chasing after these people. It's just, I want this environment where everybody feels like they own a piece, like I'll say it this way, everybody has a seat at the table. Yeah. That's a very nine value. I think if you are a nine, you will, I mean, other types are going to do this too, but as a nine, you might find yourself doing this a lot of you're in a group of five people and you're all talking and one person starts telling a story and then everyone else gets distracted and you just lock eyes with that person and you're like, your story, yeah, go ahead. Uh, And you were like, I feel crushed when I start doing that. So I want to make sure you know somebody's listening. Even if I couldn't care less about your story, I want you to know I care what you have to say because it's so important to know that people care when you're talking. Right. You did all the work to actually say something. God, let me hear it. Right. So nines are set up in a sense to be good listeners if they're willing to engage. Because mm-hmm. sometimes a nine could just sort of zone out on yeah. you. But yeah, okay, in interesting. This, in this average mid-level. Yeah, and I think there's a. I think there's a... A flip to this coin is that you might say it like this a nine inherently knows what it's like to not be listened to even well I even think, internally yeah I was gonna say even with themselves I don't listen yeah. to my own thoughts right I'd hate for you to do the same right and so the anger of the nine you might say it like this I know what it's like to not be listened to mm-hmm. so I'm gonna make sure that everybody here feels listened to yeah Stuff. It's, okay. I would say for me, it's true. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And it's not. Is it? I, I don't. I don't pick it up from you or anyone, uh, any other nines that like they're really angry about this. Like they're hurt and they're upset no. and they're a- a- agitated about this. It's just kind of like a fact. Like, well, of course people don't it's listen like, to me. It's the so. way of the world. And if I can, you know, if I can do anything, I'll be Mr. Rogers and make your world maybe a little bit softer, a little bit nicer, more comfortable for you where you know you have a place, you know. Even if I don't give you the right response you might want, then you at least know it was worth showing up and saying something because at least someone heard it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'll give you the littlest bit of at least my attention. Right. But that's that's a lot of work for somebody who might be coming from not having any, what they feel like, any attention to give. So right. if you have those lower levels working to be average, that's good on you. That's a sign. <laughs> <coughs> Nines at a moderate level, they want everyone to get along. I want everybody to get along. Not everyone wants to get along. That's true. Some people don't feel like they have any value. They lose themselves if they get along with everybody. They've got to set themselves apart. Be different. Or they've got to watch out for them. Us are safe and them are not safe. Mm-hmm. Or um, I feel powerful when I voice my uh, strong opinions and challenge people. Yeah. And then here you are a nine. I just want everybody to get along. Yeah. You're pushing your values just as much as they're pushing theirs. Just because, you know, everybody thinks that their value is like the most important value. We should all want to have a good time, right? We should all want to do the right thing. Well, nines are like, we should all want to get along. That's how we do everything. You know, that's how we do everything. Not always. Have you ever watched a debate? (laughs) You have to pick a side. As a seven, I want people to get along because I want a happy home. I want a happy environment. I Mm -hmm. want... I want us to focus on, look at, we could be doing all these fun things, yeah. but we're busy arguing with each other. No, let's get along. Let's yeah. move through this so that we can get back to doing fun things. So we can, yeah. you know, have a light. That's not your end goal. Getting along is not the goal. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just the I mean, day is better. Yeah. It's kind of like having sunshine. Mm-hmm. Like the day is more fun when the sun's out, right? Mm-hmm. When the sun's out, then... We have more options. Yeah, but uh, it's not about the sun, right? It's yeah. not about, yeah. Okay. All right, so they want everybody to get along, desiring peace and harmony. And if you're new to this, you need to watch my videos on nines and Kaylee's videos on nines because if you're new to this as a nine, your engine in life is peace, harmony, comfort, and tranquility. That's that's what every decision comes down to in one way or another is what's going to bring peace, what's going to be uh, make more harmony, what's going to protect my comfort or make this 
environment more or comfortable. Or someone that I care about their comfort. You have a bully in your life. What's going to protect their comfort like an enabler would? Yeah. If you're a nine and you hang out with threes or ones, you can get very productive. But then when they leave, you got to remember that you're not a three. You, you're, you've harmonized with threes. Mm -hmm. Your value is harmony. So you've harmonized with threes and you'll pick up that threeness for a while. But you could just as easily harmonize with fives or sevens mm -hmm. or whatever. Your value, your engine, is not drive to succeed to prove your worth and value like a three. Or organize your world and yeah. get, make the world fair and just like a one or an eight. Your value is peace, comfort, harmony, and live in that. That's not yeah. a bad thing. That's a good thing. I mean, this world... When you actually live. Look at all of the chaos and look at all of the disharmony in this world. I mean, it, you don't have to go far on the news to find disharmony, anger, chaos, discord. And in a sense, nines, you're here to help the rest of us learn to get along with each other, learn to listen to each other. Mm -hmm. And I would say a lot of... From a nine perspective, it must look like everybody in all the other types, we're all fighting with life. We're all grabbing and growling and clutching things and owning this and this is mine and I believe what I believe and I don't care what you believe. And it would look like all of us are just fighting, striving, wrestling with life. And I would think nines have got to look at that like, guys, you're just, you're too passionate about so many things. Yeah, aren't you, well, it's like, aren't you going to get burnt out on that? Well, sometimes people have, you know, a seven might not get burnt out on their life's dream you know always pursuing new things and stuff you might not get burnt out on the things you're programmed to do and you know it's seen that you're programmed that way and saying oh not everybody else is like this and it's okay that we're not all like this and it's okay that i am like this because now i can do something about it to make it work in my favor more you know, I have a bunch of skills. Let me use them and stop letting them be my faults. You know, getting along is great when we actually get along. Getting along is not great when you think we're getting along. And I'm thinking, of, I hate this. I hate, you know, bash my head against the wall. This is awful. Um, so harmony and peace is good, but you might say in order you do have to, fight in order for. for there to be peace, there has to be really two separate entities who are making peace with each other not one dominant and then the other who's just going along with this yeah. false peace. Yeah, that's not peace. That right. is, you know, I've talked to a lot of nines who are like, well, you know, if I, but I just know if I said this, Harry would be crazy. He'd go berserk if I said this because, you know, they, do you know that? Because have well, you I talked to them about it? Because a lot of times they build up this idea, well, he might, well, he might. But you're telling me, you booked an appointment with me right now to tell me that you are going crazy because you won't say anything. Just say so. Try. Try it. Maybe try it. You know? And I think there's a there's a nuanced difference between peacekeeping, which is an unhealthy nine, and peacemaking, which is a healthy nine. I, people call weapons a peacemaker. Right. Peacemaking is going to look far different than peacekeeping. Peacekeeping is if I just shut my mouth mm -hmm. and I just go along. I don't want to add to the problem. And I just don't say anything and mm -hmm. I just pretend like it's all okay and I don't, then we'll get along. Yeah. <laughs> and that's really what you would call merging or fusing with somebody else, yeah. which then... Is not fair to the other person. They wanted to have you in their life, not a mirror of them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay. What else about the mid-level? Um, because of this, they become adept at mediating differences, but become highly anxious if conflict is directed at them. So, hmm. Those nines <laughs> lose, <laughs> lose focus pursuing activities that distract them rather uh, than attending to the challenges that might be in front of them. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like, here's all these things that need your attention. Um, I think I'm going to take up. Um, I think I'm going to start quilting. crocheting. Well, it's also like I'm going to do the laundry. <laughs> oh, I have to! I have to get this paperwork filled in by the end of the week. But I really need to do my laundry and my dishes. I think I'm going to start deep cleaning my house. Those doorknobs do, aren't going to polish themselves. Yeah, nines will start doing all these things that should be done. Yeah, but not and right known, now. I've known nines that were like 
super, you would almost think they were fives because they're like super into math. And um, I, I remember talking to a nine that had just finished his graduate degree in nuclear Physicist? engineering. Oh, engineering. Nuclear engineering. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's incredible. I mean, nuclear engineering, that's amazing. And, you know, it, he wasn't really interested in nuclear engineering. He just didn't want to have a conflict with his parents. So he went to school to do something he didn't want to do. Let's play a game. How much work are you doing, willing to do to not do work? <laughs> Woo! How much? <laughs> Woo! Yeah. It's and, like when you don't want to put the shopping cart back. So you like take it through the grass and go over the mall chills. And you're like, just <laughs> how much work are you willing to do right. to not do work? So, yeah. To not have conflict with someone it's amazing how much you'll do you know or how much work you'll do because since this math comes easy to me i can focus on that instead of focusing on maybe the relationship that i need to be working on or yeah. or you know the whatever the crisis is in yeah. front of me i'm doing this productive stuff over here so i can avoid yeah. this painful or frustrating or challenging work over here. I think the average, like the medium level nine is somewhat like the illustration of a kid not wanting to rip off the band-aid because they know it's going to hurt. So they'll just like soak it in water for like two hours and it will still kind of hurt as they slowly take it off. It's like, okay, you're acknowledging that the band-aid needs to come off. That's good. You are acknowledging the problem, but you're going to spend three hours peeling off a band-aid because and leave all the glue there because you don't want to just yank it off and be done after two seconds, you know, say... This is what I think. This is my boundary. This is what it is. This is what I care about. And nines are stubborn. I, and this is what I'm doing. That's that's the end of it. Um, you're like, welcome to join me. Instead of saying that, they'll be like, well, in my brain I know. I know, exactly. But I'm not really sure about all these different things. What do you think? You know, Am I giving you the right answer when you tell me you like this? Did I give you the right answer? Chinese, what right? You, you, wanted, you wanted lunch. You wanted uh, sandwiches, right? Right? See, I'll never fight with anybody if I can figure out what they think and then just regurgitate that back to them. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! It's so fun. That's a lot of work, though, isn't it? Yeah, how much work are you willing to do? All right, so the distracted away from the problems that are in front of them. They have trouble asking for what they want. They prefer, prefer a predictable pace and routine activities. Routine activities allows you to do without engaging your thinking or feeling. Yeah. So I can do, I can be a doing type. I just don't have to really show up fully into what I'm doing. It's so nice to think and feel. That sounds so silly saying that, but it's so nice to engage in your own thoughts, your own emotions, what you really believe about something. If you don't know that, spend time with a four and be like, you seem to enjoy it. Let me figure out what I think and feel. Um, it is icky when... Um, you have this pile up, this, you know, giant mound you have to attend to. But I think that's why a lot of nines, when they go to this apathy, they go to only doing routine, they kind of fall asleep to their thoughts and their feelings. Um, it's kind of like your email. Um, you know, there's five emails there and it's overwhelming. So you go to just doing, well, you're still getting more emails. Eventually you're going to look and you're going to have a thousand emails. But I got to get to six and have anxiety yeah. to give me the energy to process my emails. Yeah. Or if you, you know, working through the Enneagram more, you might be able to, well, you'll start to be able to go to six in a healthy way of what would a six do? Right. What would somebody who is planning for the future do? I'll just, I'll at least look at two emails. I'll at least do two now. Right. And that's yeah. one of the things that I think we've shown one of the healthy steps for each type is to go ahead and go to your number of unhealth and okay. try to think like that number would think. For a seven, that would be going to one and saying, what needs yeah. to be done today? Incorporate some of their values. Yeah, and for a nine, it would be like, well, maybe I should check in with people I haven't checked mm -hmm. in with. Maybe I need to- Plan for the future a little bit. Plan for the future. Maybe I should- think about what could go wrong and try to mitigate that, you know, rather than, oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's going to be fine. <laughs> All right. So last, let's wrap up this mid-level stuff. Um, they want to be so agreeable that people will like being around them. They rarely take a stand for something they believe in, opting instead to go along with what others want or with what others believe. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, you'll get harmonizing. along fine with people harmonizing. like that. Harmonizing. Yeah. Harmonizing. What do you believe? Okay, that's what yeah. I believe. Those people probably aren't going to be very memorable or inspiring or encouraging, but they're not going to be a bother, probably, yeah. to most people. Right. So. There's there's a There seems to be a, an ability, though, if nines would tap into it, since they see the other side. You know, if I come down hard and strong on some political person or opinion, as a nine... You can't help but see, well, yeah, but there's another side to this. And I think if you could lean into that as a nine, it might make you a more interesting person to mm -hmm. to to speak with. Because if I said, you know, hamburgers are the best, mm -hmm. and anybody that doesn't think hamburgers are the best is just, you know, Bad. fooling themselves. Mm -hmm. Since you're a nine, you can't help but see that well there's a case to be made for hot dogs too i mean people like hot dogs and mm -hmm. and i think instead of instead of just harmonizing with the hamburger people why not lean into your other into your strength of seeing other points of view and say well you know tom there's a case to be made for hot dogs mm -hmm. well what do you mean hot dogs i can't believe that you're going to take the and you're not taking i know as yeah. you know that as a nine you're not taking the other side mm -hmm. but you might just speak from that side. Yeah, play devil's advocate. Yeah, a little bit, like a six might, you yeah. know. And it might it might feel uncomfortable for you. You might have to lean on your eight to do that. But it might feel uncomfortable for you, but it might turn out to be, you know. The best thing you ever did. <laughs> it might engage the people that are yeah. talking with you. If you said, well, you know, there's a case to be made for hot dogs. And, you know, I sometimes like hot dogs better than hamburgers. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think nine eights probably do that pretty well. I know um, Zach's been in a few videos. Zach will do that all day long in his sleep. Um, he'll do that. But I know I think a lot of nines can access that a little bit more if it's not something you are sensitive about. You know, if you don't know. Right. If you haven't made up your mind. If you've made up your mind, you might not want to argue your point because somebody might try to change your mind. But if it is hamburgers and hot dogs, it's a lot easier. So if you haven't done this kind of thing before, you can always start with these little things of, well, I like, well, I don't know why everybody hates Mondays so much. Mondays are just fine. Mondays are fine for me. I don't know why everybody hates so much. I think if you, so if you <laughs> live with a nine, especially if you live with a nine, you might sometimes feel like they're seeing the other perspective in a way that's combative to you. And if you can realize that nines, nines really don't wear the team jerseys, you know. I remember they're the referees, so they they don't see themselves necessarily as being on a team. Mm -hmm. They see themselves as observers to the game. And so if I'm wearing a green jersey and I'm saying green jerseys are what our team wears, why aren't you wearing a green jersey? And I realize that. It's not that I have anything against the it's green not team. The, right. It's not that I have anything and that you're for, for the, red, the team. red team. It's, it's just, just that I was observing right. and my, you know, my senses were telling me. Yeah. And, and you might do well if you live with a nine. Don't expect them to be on your side on every issue because they literally have a hard time being on a side. They don't even have their own side yet. Yeah they see all sides and let's respect them for that ability and then draw it out of them that's what i'm saying is lean into that and just voice the other side sometimes yeah it can be di i think it can be really difficult for the maybe the sevens but definitely like the eights and the fours who want this intensity and the nines just kind of you know and sixes that want to know that you're on my team yeah. If I'm a six, I want you on my team. Yeah. And why aren't you agreeing with me? And why aren't you, why are you voicing up for that, for that side? And if yeah. I can remember, you're a nine. Mm -hmm. You aren't necessarily Going on, to give me the intensity I'm looking team. for. Right. Yeah. You are a neutral, in a sense, harmonizing neutral bystander mm -hmm. who doesn't want to. Who has an important role that's different than. Doesn't want to be on a team against another team. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Then I don't have to be upset with you if you're not in complete agreement with things. Why would we need to be in complete agreement with things? We're two individuals. Why can't we just love each other? Yeah. See, we're terrible. One of the things the Enneagram teaches us, which the Bible teaches us too, is we're terrible at loving each other. If you'll be who I want you to be and do what I want you to do and believe and think like me, then I'll love you. 
Yep. Uh, and that's not really love, is it? Love is mm -hmm. you do things that don't make sense to me. You have values that are different than mine. You sometimes scratch and hurt me. And yet I still carry affection for you and want the best for you. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of love that the world really doesn't grasp very well. Yeah. All right. Highest level of the nine. The fully conscious individual. Look at that. Fully <laughs> conscious. I'm awake. Individual. I'm engaged. And I'm an individual. Yeah. What type is called the individual? The, the four. four. Yeah. And what, what does a nine do at their lowest? They are stuck in their sleepy body without any you know, interaction with thinking and feeling. And once they are healthy, they can actually have thoughts and emotions. And I'm a person. Of your own. I'm a person. Yeah. It's okay for me to have dreams, hopes, wants, likes, dislikes, disagree with people, be on team, be off a team. Yeah. However icky it is, maybe you should practice saying, I am entitled to every other right that every other person's entitled to. I'm Normal entitled person. to thoughts and feelings <laughs> just like everyone else. <coughs> Yeah, right. the word entitled is kind of icky, but for like, you know, human rights, that's, it's true. You are. So the core understanding huh. of this highest level is an unconditional regard that connects everyone and everything. Nines who have reached the high level of self-mastery no longer have difficulty taking a stand. Yep. Okay. <laughs> in fact, they approach life in an active and purposeful way. Purposeful. That's a good word. Mm -hmm. purposeful way and I think really it's intentness when I think about like intentions what is the purpose of a nine everybody has their own unique purpose I get that and ultimately we all live to glorify God but what is the ultimate purpose of a nine it's to bring the very thing that they're looking for peace harmony comfort and tranquility the thing that we look for in our type sevens look for satisfaction happiness joy that's what we bring when we're healthy and a nine is looking to have peace and harmony. That's what you bring. When you're healthy, you will go into places where they're lacking comfort and harmony, and you will help those people learn to get along with each other, to hold life with a little bit more of a nine gr grasp. Instead of you know holding on and, and owning things and fighting for stuff, nines tend to approach the world like this is freedom. Mm -hmm. and they kind of get the rest of us to realize maybe I'm fighting with life yeah, and maybe I could just be more of an observer mm -hmm. to things and not don't die on every hill. Yeah. Not every hill needs your bloodshed. It's okay. Some things you won't matter in a hundred years, like those little things, right. some things actually you don't, what are you giving your time to? What's important to you? Um, not every battle is important. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the very thing that I think nines are looking for when they're not doing well, peace, harmony, comfort, tranquility, is what they bring. And really that is your purpose in life as a nine. Now just go find the job. It doesn't matter now the job is secondary. Like whether you're doing that work, that mediating, harmonizing work in a hospital or at a university or in politics or in a classroom, that's secondary. Now it's just find the place that lets you bring that healing, mm -hmm. that comforting warmness. Find a place that values that and needs that. And now you found where your place to fit yeah. in, in this world, which isn't hard again to find a place that needs somebody to harmonize and yeah. heal, bring healing. Yeah. And, you know, thinking about this, the... I know one thing that I've been working on for a while and I think I've gotten a lot better at um, in this getting healthier is having an argument or a fight or that tough discussion or something, I can start to look forward to that because that is what's going to help alleviate these problems. I can't wait until we finally talk about all the problems so then they can start going away instead of let's just bury these. Let's get rid of these. Right. But like, you know, you have a problem with so and so and you're mad at me because of because I don't have a problem with so and so. Okay, let's talk about it. Let's really let's talk about it. Okay. And feeling a relief because I know we're actually going to be able to work this out. You're going to be heard and I'm going to right. be Right. Are you settling for a false harmony when yeah. you could work for a real harmony with people? Yeah. And 
I'm going to trust you enough to do what I'm doing of not just going to run away when we disagree about this. We're both going to sit here and we're both going to talk until it's taken care of. And we're both going to be as kind as possible while doing it and respectful, but that's how this is going to (laughs) work. And not just thinking the worst of, well, they're probably going to get really mad and then they're going to hate me and they're going to scream over me and they're not even going to understand. I'm going to dig myself a hole even deeper. Um, When you really look back on life, how many times has that scenario really happened to you? Yeah. Or <laughs> it's not like this is oh yeah. this happens all the time and the, so that's the digging yourself a deeper hole and misunderstanding happens when you don't have the conversation. When you don't just say, Hey, you know, when I didn't mean it like that. I apologize because I didn't mean it like that and you know, you thought they were really mad at you and you didn't want to confront that anger and then but they say, Oh, I didn't even realize you said that. Oh, Okay. Well, I've been worried for the last three days. I've had diarrhea worried for the last three days for no reason. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Right. (sighs) Okay. They approach life in an active, purposeful way, knowing that they have a right to voice their opinions. They're involved, engaged, extremely vital, solid, substantial, and alert. They're also very (coughs) serene, deeply content, and in the flow which all come from their inner core. Doesn't that sound wonderful? Oh, you have an inner core? What? Where's that <laughs> part? Where did you highlight that part? Okay. How do I find my inner core? Yeah. Well, yeah, in nines you do. You don't necessarily see it. The rest of us see it mm-hmm. because, you know, anytime there's a conflict, we're going to see you wanting to work against that conflict. Mm-hmm. That's true to your inner core. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the ways it says to help a coach, help coach a nine, listen to this is help them to create a clear vision for what they most want, most want, that's good, then guide them in developing a concrete action plan. Because sometimes it can be dreamy in your head. Doables, doables. It can be dreamy in your head, but it doesn't necessarily come out into a plan. You know, ones make plans, right? That's a wing. Guess who else makes plans? Threes make plans, sixes make plans, Eight sometimes just move to action without a plan. Not that they don't plan, but they're more like, you know, mm-hmm. just they're going to get the first step and they start doing they're it. just going to start. They're just going to jump yeah. in. But think about that. Three numbers that you are in contact that you with. have lines to yep. are all really planners. Threes, ones and sixes. Man, they are all planners. Yeah. And nines are such routine characters by nature. Having a plan is so it's so freeing. Having a list is freeing because you say, now, if I have to pack this whole pack for a trip, I wrote down everything I need on the list. It's not this huge, overwhelming thing. I can see right here. I need these 10 things. Otherwise, you have all these. I have so many things I have to pack. You have 10 things. You just wrote it down. But you can see you have 10. Um, and, you know, getting that dream. A lot of people that I talk to, a lot of nines I talk to are, well, I just want us to get along better. Okay, what do you think that will look like? Um, what are the kinds of problems? And why is that important? Yeah. And what are we getting along to accomplish? Yeah, why do we want to get along? Do they want to get along? Because what does it mean to get along? That's what that's your clear vision. What does it mean to get along? Because you and I might have very different ideas of what it means to get along. Right. And, and maybe you're not the kind of person that anyone in their right mind should want to get along with. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit. Kaylee, do you have anything else to say in these last minutes that you think have found helpful for the nine? Anything, any final thoughts that um, you want to share? I would say I have some videos on nines. So if you want to go over to my channel and watch some of those um, along with like some other types and some different videos, um, it's uh, okay. What I would say to the nines is for the potential very unhealthy nines, apathy is not the answer because you that is just you ignoring problems and they keep building up. They will continue to build up. Life is so enjoyable um, when you start to actually live it. And then for the medium to healthier nines, um, you know, your skills and your talents, if you're just learning about the Enneagram, might be a lot different than everybody else's. Everybody, it seems like everybody else got really cool stuff. You know, they, they all, you know, have dreams and passions, you know, you do too. And it's, it's good to be agreeable and loving and kind to people and make people feel welcomed. 
but it's good to get along in a healthy way and help people to get along, help people find peace. That is good. That is a good thing. That is also important. Yes. So I think it can be easy to be like, oh, everybody loves these people because everybody notices this amazing thing about them. It's good to stand up for something and, you know, people do notice you because you are alive and you are another person. That's that's pretty much it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So check out the description below. Book an appointment with Kaylee. Move toward health. All right, guys. See you. We'll catch you next time.